Today I will show you how to connect your application to a Firebase emulator suite like this so you can interact with it directly and also set one variable that allows you to switch back to a real database like this. So I'm going to go through the whole process of adding Firestore to your application. So if you're just interested in the emulators part, make sure to skip ahead. All right? There should be chapters outlining all this stuff. But here we're starting with the very basic application, the one you get right when you create a new Flutter project. We're going to need two dependencies for this. We're going to need Firebase Core and Cloud Firestore. Now we need to go to our Firebase project and add an application. And since Flutter 3, Flutter is now a supported platform on Firebase. So you need to make sure you have the Firebase CLI installed and that the you have the Flutter SDK installed. Now run this command from any directory. I already had it installed so you don't really see much. And then from our actual project directory we want to run this second command. And it'll ask us which platforms we want to do. You can do all of them but for this I'm just going to do Android. It will ask if you want the Gradle files updated which is pretty awesome that it actually does that now. But there we go our Firebase should be set up. This is just telling us that we need to initialize Firebase before we start and make sure to add this line called widgets flutter binding ensure initialized so the widgets flutter binding is the glue that binds the framework to the flutter engine so this just makes sure the flutter engine and everything is working and you need to have that in order to be able to initialize the firebase app right here so with firebase initialized i try to run it and we see we run into a problem where it needs a minimum sdk version to be at least 19. to fix that go to Android app Gradle and just set that to a valid Android version that's higher than 19. I'm just gonna do 21 for this. All right, so there we go. We have a working Flutter app. Now let's remove all the comments and clean this up a bit. Okay, so we're ready to connect the database now. We're gonna go to the homepage widget and here we're gonna create an instance of Firebase Firestore. I'm gonna call it DB for database. So now theoretically we should have access to our database. And then we're gonna use a did change dependencies, which is like init state except it runs every time your dependencies change instead of just once the reason we're using this is because it can actually be asynchronous so i don't need to move the code around into a separate function even though that's probably the proper way to do it but we're just making a demo here so i'm not too worried about that and actually before that in this increment counter we're going to do db the users collection we're going to have a document called just Tatis. and we're going to write this counter variable into our database so you should actually be able to see this update within our Firebase database and I didn't refresh it. There we go. Now, before we actually get to the emulators part, I wanted to be able to retrieve that counter and input it into our viewport. So we can copy paste all this and instead of set, we're gonna do get and we're gonna retrieve that counter value and set it to this local variable that we have. So now, every time we should refresh, you'll see it'll start off at zero and go to two. And if we increment five or something like that, restart it, it'll always go back to five. That's the normal way to do Firebase and Firestore and now using an emulator. So what an emulator does, it allows you to basically run the same functions except on a local server. This means you can mess around with the data all you want. You could play around with it. You could ruin everything and you don't have to worry about it going to your production server or anything like that. It's probably the way you want to be testing and building code. It's a lot more safer than actually working within a Firebase project. So do that within our project folder. We're gonna create a folder called backend here. Make sure you have your Firebase CLI initialized and you're logged in, and then you can do Firebase init. Now, one of the choices here is an emulator. We want to use an existing project. Our Firebase project was called test. So make sure to select that test project. And all we're gonna need is a Firestore emulator, but you can see you can do all those things. Which port? We want the default port. Do we want to enable the UI? Yes. Would you like to download the emulators? No. Yes. So there we go. It's done. Now to start that emulator, we need to do Firebase emulators colon start. And I'll see on this end, there's a whole bunch of code coming out. And now our emulator is live here at localhost 4000. This is what the dashboard looks like. And then you can go into each one, like our Firestore emulator, and you can see kind of replication of what we have in the actual Firebase project. Now, since we only set up Firestore, authentication, real-time database functions, all of these are off. So this is the only one that's actually on. All right, so now how do we get our code to actually use the local emulator instead of our Firebase project? So first we're gonna define the host location for most of them, it should be local host, just like this. But Android decides to be a little bit different. So for Android, this is the equivalent of local host. Now in our init state, or in this case, the did change dependencies, we're gonna call a function on our database called use Firestore emulator. Then we pass the host. Our port is 8080. And then we're gonna do an extra step that isn't really necessary, but will make it a little bit easier if you're switching back and forth between the real Firestore on the cloud and your local database. So we're gonna add this database setting called persistence enabled, and we're gonna set it to false. So basically it doesn't allow you to save that data on the actual device. 
Now, where you probably want to use this for some things, if you're switching back and forth between them, it's gonna have your database like not acting properly because we just want to clean slate every time I switch. All right, so if we save that and then we rerun it, we should see a zero here, and then we can go to our Firebase emulator, and if we increment, should see we should see it pop up. There we go. Now, if we go to our code and restart it, it should bring all this data in. And a really simple way to switch between them is to create a constant Boolean variable up here. So we create a variable called use emulator and then check if we want to use that emulator. In this case, we'll put a false. So if you refresh, it should go to the actual Firebase Cloud Firestore. And we'll be able to increment this, close to seven. We can set this to true. Now, if you want to use the emulator, refresh, we'll go to four from the previous one and we're able to switch between both environments really easily. So there we go. That was a basic introduction on Firebase emulators. Now I want to take a second and chat to all people that have been watching me for a little while. Over the past probably year or so, you've probably seen my content has been a little bit all over the place. And this is actually probably the first Flutter specific tutorial you've watched in a while. Well, I'm happy to say I think I'm back. The goal was to explore editing, to explore all that type of stuff and really learn how to create quality YouTube videos. I don't think I'm an expert at, but I think I've gotten significantly better since I started all that. I also wanted to explore different types of content to just kind of feel out what I really like to do. And I'm kind of circling back now to just creating tutorials. It's just super rewarding to be able to actually help people accomplish the things they want to do. And for me personally, it kind of incentivizes me to work on stuff and gives me more clear path line instead of trying to be very creative with whatever videos I'm trying to make. So expect to see more of this. By the same time, I do enjoy making those other creative videos. So maybe some between the tutorials, there'll probably be sprinkled out some more general videos and things like that. Also for the next couple videos, I have planned, they're all Flutter related, but I do want to get into other technologies. For example, Unity has been the one that's been calling my name a lot recently. Just after I experienced VR, I was like, this is this is the future. And then also I've been working with Svelte and Next.js to build a couple websites. Maybe I'll make a video sharing my opinion why I would use those instead of Flutter Web to build a website as of right now. But yeah, I'm excited to circle back. And I think in a couple of videos, I'll have something very exciting for all of you.